Hey, what's going on everybody? Jay's Two Cents here, and I am holding in my hand here the next generation of motherboards featuring USB 3.1. And this one is from MSI, and it is the X99A Gaming 7. MSI has really made a push towards this gaming line of motherboards and graphics cards, and it's doing pretty damn well for itself. So today we're gonna do a kind of a quick overview and unboxing of this thing, and then we're gonna hook it up, and we're just gonna have a great time, and the only thing we're gonna be missing is s'mores. But we don't like s'mores because they're unhealthy, and God, they taste amazing. The new EVGA Silent Series power supplies offer excellent silence and efficiency through their new EVGA Eco Mode technology and also features a seven year warranty for worry free gaming. Click the link in the description to learn more. I don't really want to spend a whole lot of time going over the overview on this thing because really it shares and inherits a lot of the features that are already on the Z97 gaming series of motherboards, especially the Gaming 7. The main difference on this thing really being the USB 3.1. Now the USB 3.1 actually has up to 10 gigabit per second connection which is twice as fast as USB 3.0. Unfortunately I don't have a testing kit so I can't actually test that today. Uh, but just take my word for it. We did take a look at it at uh, CES and it was going very, very fast, especially compared to USB 3.0. Now it features all the same stuff that you would come to expect, which is the Audio Boost 2.0 with its high quality amplifiers and capacitors on there. So you can run high impedance headphones directly off the motherboard with a very low noise floor, no hiss or crackle and actually power, uh, power hungry headphones like the Sennheiser Game Zeros and which just take 150 ohms uh, to drive, or they have 150 ohms of resistance to drive, and so you usually would need a DAC or an amplifier. This can do it built in. Pretty much all of the MSI gaming motherboards are coming with the killer 20, E2200 uh, NIC in there, so it's a network prioritization, packet prioritization. If you're not already aware, the E2200 is basically packet prioritization built into the networking card so that your games get priority traffic when it comes to the network coming in and out of your computer. Now the USB audio power built into this thing, if you guys are running an external DAC, basically it's gonna allow nice, clean, solid vi five volt output of the USB power, which sometimes on other motherboards, when you plug in multiple USB devices, the five volt can actually drop down as low as 4.6, and that can create a problem for some USB powered DACs. So this is utilizing and featuring a USB audio power amplifier built in, so it's always gonna have five volts of constant power coming out of the USB. Now this thing wouldn't really be a gaming motherboard if it couldn't handle a bunch of graphics cards, so it does support up to quad SLI and quad crossfire. Now of course, it's got all the other mumbo jumbo you'd expect like turbo M.2 drives for a gen three by four. One other thing that I really like uh, the MSI is doing and other manufacturers have started doing as well is their promotion of the live streaming community. This motherboard actually comes with a free six month premium exploit license. So if you bought this motherboard, then you would be able to start live streaming immediately with it with a six month premium key. That's pretty cool. And that's just a bonus right there. So there you go. That is the overview portion of the X99A Gaming 7. Let's go ahead and hook this thing up into the test bench. Let's do some overclocking and some gaming. And let's go ahead and see just how badass this thing really is. I love the aesthetics of this board. It looks freaking amazing. And uh, I guess you guys know what that means it's time for. So I'll go, ahead and let, I'll go ahead and let you guys cue it up. Go ahead and say it right now. Transition. I've gone ahead and installed the motherboard over here and put my lovely Titan on there, as you can see. And the first thing we're gonna test with this motherboard is uh, boot time. Now you guys know the BIOS can actually add a lot of time when it comes to booting up your system. So let's go ahead and see how the BIOS does on here. I just hit the power button and there's the splash screen for the monitor. <laughs> B4, 9C down there, postcodes A2, splash screen and Windows boot screen. So, I mean, it's not terrible. It's not super fast, but I also don't have MSI's memory fast boot on there. Oh look, activate Windows, because it just recognized that I put a new motherboard on here, therefore it's like, oh yeah, you need to activate. So yeah, we'll deal with that later. Um, one of the troubles of installing tons of motherboards. Now one of the things I really like about this motherboard 
because I have looked at this motherboard and looked at the BIOS and stuff before getting to this portion of the video, is the amount of options that are actually on this thing. It's absolutely insane. Now, gaming motherboards tend to have all the things that a gamer would want. Uh, you know, things like SLI support, better sound, better networking for packet prioritization. Prioritiz apparently talking is hard. Uh, things like packet prioritization for gaming and stuff. And usually you, you, you give up a few functions like a lot of overclocking support, but not the case here. Now, one of the things MSI is really known for is the uh, MSI OC Genie. In fact, that's looking kind of blurry. Let me, let, me, let me fix that for you there. Okay, that should be a little better. I know it's not ideal pointing a camera at the screen, but I also am using DisplayPort for this monitor and I can't capture DisplayPort. Uh, anyway, you have OC Genie here and clicking that, it's kind of like a one touch overclock. We'll go ahead and hit that and let's go ahead and see what kind of overclock it puts on here. This is my 5820K. They did actually send with me a uh, 5930K with this motherboard, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and use my 5820K because then I have something to compare it to because I was already doing overclocking on my other motherboard so I can see if this is getting me any better results or not. So right away it says OC Genie is enabled. When you go into the BIOS, it tells you like, don't touch anything in the BIOS for overclocking. It's not recommended, but we can see here it did overclock to 3.8 gigahertz. Uh, did a multiplier of 38. So up from 3.3 to 3.8. It's pretty modest. It's only 500 megabyte or megabytes, 500 megahertz, nothing huge. And then the DRAM uh, went from 2133 to 2400. Now this is obviously not using XMP Profile 2 because this is 2800 megahertz RAM and it's only running at 24. So it's very conservative. These must be numbers that MSI feels very confident every single CPU will post with. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable OC Genie will restart and then we'll start showing you some of the settings in this board. It's actually quite impressive. Okay, so this BIOS is gonna look very familiar to anyone with an MSI motherboard. Uh, we have our settings tab here and it's got lots of different functions in here, advanced PCI subsystem, power management setup, basically what happens when the power turns off, et cetera, et cetera, all that kind of stuff you'd come to expect. Boot prioritization settings there, or you can just drag the icons here around in the order you want them to boot in. Very, very user friendly. Uh, and then we have over here, hardware profile. Now this is gonna bring up a lot of different stuff here. In fact, you have all your different fans. You can see the RPMs of those fans and you can play with the temperature fan curve on here. So just like you do with your NVIDIA graphics cards, your AMD graphics cards, you can then utilize a smart fan mode and you can start to control uh, the fan speed based on temperature. And this, motherboard, I'm actually using the CPU fan one for the pump. So the pump is speeding up and slowing down since it's a PWM pump based on this curve. So you can see right here, the pump's running at 1250. Now I could tell it, uh, you know, just run at full speed or give me fan control, etc., etc. But I prefer to just kind of let it do its own thing. It's actually pretty smart. CPU is idling right now at 39 Celsius. It's actually pretty hot in the BIOS. It tends to go under more of a load than when sitting at desktop. Uh, but for overclocking, I was actually quite impressed. There are a ton, <clears throat> and I mean a ton, of overclocking functions here. In fact, way more than the average user is probably going to need. So I'm just going to do a basic overclock here. We're in advanced mode. There's even a simple mode for overclocking where you can do very simple stuff. Uh, in fact, I'll leave it at simple right now. We'll do a CPU ratio of 45. That's going to give us 4,500 megahertz as a targeted CPU frequency. Uh, ring ratio, we'll leave that at audio, audio, auto. CPU base clock, we'll leave that at 100. DRAM frequency, let's go ahead and go for, let's go for 2666. Interestingly enough, there's no 2800 on there. A lot of motherboards actually omitted 2800 because it seemed like there was something going on with the chipset where 2800 was not stable for most motherboards and most RAMs. So they jump straight from 2666 to 3200. Now, why am I not going with 3200? Well, because when you overclock uh, the CPU, the memory controller also goes under stress. And so you don't want to go too high on your memory first. So we're just gonna do 2666, which is an overclock on the memory from 2133, which is the base clock, but we're not going to the XMP speed of 2800 just yet. In fact, if we wanted to do that, we would do that right here at the XMP profile. Um, Mem try it. Basically, it's um, compatibility for performance mode, DRAM, timing mode. We leave that all stock, fast boot stock. 
And then we can start playing with voltages here. So we got VCC in voltage is set at two. I'm gonna put that to 2.1. I'm gonna put the voltage a little bit high. Let's do 1.35, I already know that's good. It turns red because MSI is basically telling you, hey, bro, you're gonna burn up your CPU, but we're, we're fine, we're underwater. Green voltage, we'll leave all that at auto. And then CPU specifications, CPU technology support. This is just telling you things about your CPU. You can't change anything in there. Memory Z, uh, CPU features. This is the screen that I wasn't expecting in here. This is the kind of stuff you tend to find on uh, like the Mpower, which is their overclocking board. You can see you get, you get control over everything in here. You can even, uh, see I've already turned off C1E support, but you can even do uh, C state limits. You can do the long duration power limit in watts, long duration maintained, short duration power limit, CPU current limit, over temperature protection, interval VR, OV and OCP protection, uh, DMI Gen 2, DMI D emphasis control. Um, you guys have no idea what any of this is, I'm sure, but basically this is giving you enthusiast level overclocking. We're talking like LN2, trying to break world records type of control on this. And then as well as the digital power, look at all the voltage control you get in here. CPU under voltage protection, overcurrent protection, switching frequency. You can even change the frequency at which the voltage is switching. Uh, CPU under voltage protection, over voltage protection, V droop control, we'll put that at 100 right now. CPU phase control. I mean, they just give you so much stuff that for the average person you would just never ever use. So right now we're just gonna try for a basic 4.5 uh, gigahertz and 2666 on the memory and 2.1 volts into the package, 1.35 volts on the CPU. It's a little bit on the higher side, but I think we'll post, let's see. This is kind of an important number because 4.5 wasn't very stable on either my ASUS board or my ASRock board. I had to bump it down to 4.4 over time because it degraded slightly. But we are currently right now in here and booted 4.5 gigahertz. So now we need to do a little stress test and see if it holds up. And either way, it's kind of got my overclocking vote of approval because it's uh, giving you all the functions you could ever possibly need for overclocking. And in a gaming motherboard, that's pretty awesome. Now, if it doesn't crash immediately, that's a good thing. Now we're stressing the CPU, the FPU, the cache, and the memory all at once on here. And temperatures look like they're sitting in the 63, 57, 48, 40. So yeah, looks like we're sitting right around the mid 60s on the temperatures, that's good because uh, high 80s is actually TJ Maxx for the uh, 2011-3 sockets. So looks like we're doing pretty good there. So what we'll do now is we'll just let this run for a minute and then we'll come back and see how it's, uh, how it's performing or whether or not it stayed stable, I should say. Well, this thing's been going for about eight minutes now and as you can see, we've got no crashes whatsoever, no uh, errors. And the temperature seem to have stabilized right around the mid 70s on the cores. It's actually very, very good considering how much voltage is being pumped into this thing. So now if, I, if this was an overclocking tutorial, I would tell you to start bringing down the voltage if you're okay with this frequency or step it up one more notch on the frequency multiplier and see if you get a post. I don't think we will, but for the sake of it, we'll go ahead and try 4.6 just to see if it posts. And then we'll kind of go ahead and do a wrap up about this motherboard and how I feel about it. Well, 4.6 is trying to boot into Windows. And we got a crash. Yeah, I didn't think 4.6 was gonna happen. I couldn't get that to happen on any one of my systems. And heck, even 4.5 wasn't even get, able to get into the desktop on my, neither my ASRock nor my X99 Deluxe board. So that's kind of interesting. So I'm not sure what MSI is doing differently here, but we do seem to have a little bit better stability. So I'm gonna put that back to 4.5. And let's go ahead and talk about the, how I feel about this board. Well, there we go, guys, the X99A Gaming 7 from MSI. I don't tend to go this deep into motherboard reviews. They're actually a pain in the ass, honestly, to hook them up and get all the drivers installed and stuff. There's a lot of stuff I wasn't able to even cover with this, otherwise the video would have been, you know, five hours long. I mean, all the stuff you saw me doing with the overclock, you could do with their own desktop utilities but I'm an old school overclocker. I like to do things the old school way through BIOS. And as you can see, their UEFI BIOS. Uh, it's very easy to navigate. It's very friendly. And they give you a lot more functions than I thought that they would. I mean, the functions that we were seeing here were like M power level. Really makes me wonder how the X99 uh, X power is, is performing 
when it comes to all the overclocking functions. So, I mean, not only is the software and the BIOS and the motherboard great, but the construction of it is fantastic. I mean, it, it utilizes all of the lineage from like the military class specs that it's put on a lot of their high-end motherboards. Uh, it's got multi-layer PCBs. It's got, you know, sound house isolation for the uh, built-in audio so you're not getting cracking and popping and stuff. Everything about it just seems very, very solid. Now, granted, it's red and black, and that seems to be a little bit overdone. It does look really, really good. I mean, the heat sinks on there are fantastic looking. The board layout's great. The matte PCB looks fantastic. The only thing I'm not a huge fan of, though, is the way that it has green buttons and a blue LED in there. That just kind of kills it for me. Make it all red or or maybe even a white LED would look better. I think the blue and the green murder it once it's on. And if you had it sitting up in a normal case with a case window, that would really take away from the overall black and red that the gaming line has really come to, to stand for. Well guys, that is it for the X99A Gaming 7. I think it's gonna stay on my test bench for a while. When I do motherboard reviews, uh, I like to put my favorites in the systems. And right now the MSI uh, X99A is definitely a very solid, solid motherboard. Can't really think of anything I don't like about it with the exception of the lights, like I said, and that's very, very, uh, it's very trivial. So anyway, guys, follow on social media if you guys have any questions. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a fan of the channel. And I look forward to making my next Jay's Two Cents video. I, I would say I don't know what it's about, but I actually do. I'm actually getting caught up in the amount of stuff there is to do, including Skunk Works build right around the corner. I've said that before, so that means you don't believe me. But it's soon, I promise. Oh, hey there. Didn't see you guys come in. Welcome to an adventurous night with Jay's Two Cents and Coconut Monkey. Tonight we're going to be reviewing the DX Racer Chair. So buckle up, because this is going to be fun. Fun. <laughs>